Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com, and this is your <laughs> photo news fix. This fix is brought to you by Squarespace. My personal website, jaredpoland.com, is built using Squarespace, and I wouldn't use anything else if you were a photographer or a creative. It's simple, easy, affordable, and you don't need to know any coding. To get a 14-day free trial without a credit card, head on over to squarespace.com slash photo. and if you decide that it's for you, use the code photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. First up, I hate that this keeps happening and that I have to keep doing stories like this. A 17-year-old high school kid was struck and killed by a train during a senior portrait session. Now, this should never happen. It just shouldn't happen happen. I feel horrible for the family. I feel horrible for the victim and I feel horrible for the photographer who has to live with this for the rest of their life. But let's make something clear. You as a photographer need to say no anytime someone asks you to do a shoot near or on active train tracks. If someone asks you to do a shoot on active train tracks, you say no, it's not worth losing your life over the photos. The only people who should be doing anything near active train tracks are people who should be near active train tracks. Or if you're a photographer, you have permission to be near those active train tracks. There's a reason I make an over the top big deal out of train track photos when I see them. I do it because I wanna hammer it home time and time again. So whenever you or someone else thinks about doing anything near active train tracks, you see my face telling you not to be an asshole. Please stay off the tracks and tell everyone you know to do the same thing. Next up at Adobe Max 2019, Adobe announced a ton of updates across multiple programs, including Lightroom Mobile, Lightroom CC, Photoshop for iPad, Premiere, and a few others. Now I wanna focus on the photography-centric updates in Lightroom, starting with something Adobe is calling Fill Edges. This option uses content-aware fill to fill in uneven panoramas automatically. Now it's nice to see these features that are normally just in Photoshop end up making their way into Lightroom. Room. Next, there's multiple batch export for those times when you want to export one image for multiple different uses. For example, let's say I want full res to make a print, 2,000 pixels across for an email and web usage, and maybe the perfect export size for Facebook for that perfect looking upload, which doesn't actually exist because they always look like shit no matter what I do. I think you get the point for how this works. It's gonna save people who need multiple exports at different sizes a ton of time. As per usual, Adobe claims GPU speed improvements for Windows and Mac that should provide a smoother and more responsive experience. And I really hope that's true this time. And the last update I'd like to talk about is you can now export develop presets and preset groups. The reason I bring this up is, well, we finished Ropac 2 last week and there was no option to batch export them into a single folder. Instead, Steven had to right click to show the files in Finder or export them one at a time. So Ropac 2 is done, which means it is coming soon. That also means that Fro Pack 1, which is on sale for $30, will go up to its regular price of $50. Now, if you haven't picked up FroPack 1 just yet, head on over to fronosphoto.com slash FroPack1 to check them out. <laughs> Moving on, Sigma has announced a 24-70 2.8DG DN art lens for Sony E-mounts and, and, and the E-mount Alliance. The lens will be available sometime in mid-November for a yet-to-be-determined price. Now, if I had to guess, and I do have to guess, it will be right around $1,199, give or take a few hundred bucks. Next up, I want to apologize to Nikon for ever questioning your wisdom of creating a manual focus only $8,000 lens. It looks like... I was wrong. Who am I kidding? I wasn't wrong, that lens is still stupid. But Nikon posted a notice to their Japanese website titled, Apology for Temporary Suspension of Orders. That reads, it is expected that it will take a considerable amount of time to deliver the product because we received many orders exceeding expectations. Therefore, we decided to suspend the order. We apologize for any inconvenience caused to customers who are considering purchasing. Who are they kidding? They made like 10 of these things beforehand for five doctors and five lawyers, and it turns out a few more douchebags wanted to waste their money. No offense to douchebags. If you're not really a douchebag if you buy this lens, it's, it's a joke for the show. 
for, you know, for the show. For show. If Nikon wants me to believe demand was so high, show me all the purchase orders and I will gladly eat some crow. Needs garlic. Until then. Shut up! And finally, Canon secretly released their next full frame mirrorless camera in the hopes no one would notice because it's kind of a waste of a camera for most people. But guess what, Canon? You failed! You failed miserably because I noticed, and now everyone else will notice because I'm letting them know. Introducing a camera that truly only 12 people will ever buy, the EOS RA. What's RA stand for anyway? Resident advisor? Are you here for the feeding? Rheumatoid arthritis? Doctor said I need a bacchiotomy. Radio! All right, Dan, all right. Radioactive? <laughs> no, I'll tell you what it stands for. Stupid. Stupid is stupid does. That's what it stands for. All jokes aside, the EOS RA features a specifically designed IR filter that's been modified to allow four times as much transmission of the 656 millimeter wavelength compared to the regular EOS R. Now, personally, I was hoping for the 666 wavelength myself. <laughs> Canon says this allows for a higher transmission of deep red infrared rays emitted by nebula without requiring any other specific optics or accessories. If you haven't guessed it yet, this camera is dedicated to deep sky and night sky photography. Now, Dan, I wonder if it can help me see your anus. Bend over and I'll show you. I know, it's a f***ing childish joke. You, you can leave a comment down below, but you laughed. It's always gonna be funny. Pretty much everything else about this camera is the same except for the price. Instead of $1,800, you will have to fork out $2,500 to own one of the 12 cameras that Canon made. 12! Uh, uh, uh. Honestly, I'm sure this camera is pretty cool for those people who want it, but Canon really needs to focus on their bread and butter, which is not this. What do you think about this camera? And there you have it. That's your photo news fix this time around. To check out the last fix, go ahead and click on the screen right here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that's where I'm gonna leave it. Jared, PolandFronosPhoto.com. See ya.